Hey guys, in this video we're going to dissect the frog. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the procedure and the process and then also identify the organs for you. Okay, so the first thing we need is to gather our materials. We obviously need the frog. You're going to need your latex gloves. You'll need a pair of dissection scissors. And then you're going to also need a dissection probe. I'll also be giving each one of you an organ identification chart because you'll be placing the organs onto this chart uh, so that I can check and make sure that you understand and you know uh, what each organ is as you take it out of the frog. Okay, so the first thing that we're doing is we're going to put on our latex, latex gloves. We've talked about this several times about uh, making sure that we put them on and not play with them. Okay, so once you got them on your hands, uh, we're not going to pop the gloves or mess with the gloves. And then I always get the question, what is that powder inside of the gloves? That powder simply just makes it easier to get the gloves on and off. Um, just baby powder. All right, so got my gloves on and I'm all set to go. Okay, so I want to make a couple observations about the frog as we go through. Uh, to begin with, you're going to notice obviously his colorings on the outside. He's got this pattern. Uh, dark green pattern. That's his camouflage. Obviously the frog spends a lot of the time on the ground, in the water, in green environments. Therefore he wants to be as camouflaged as possible to avoid predators. Um, if we flip him over, you're going to notice that he is much lighter on the underside. He doesn't need that green, that dark green coloring on his underside because it's not being exposed. Alright, looking at the frog again, uh, just general observations. You're going to notice that he has these long very strong legs. Frogs jump. He uses them to swim. That's where all of his movement comes from is in his hind legs versus his smaller upper legs which are simply just used to support, to support the upper body. Okay. Um, we can look at the feet of the frog. You're going to notice that he has these webbed feet. Okay, He's got a webbing like a, like a duck would have webbed feet which helps him swim when he's in the water. He's got one, two, three, four, five toes, and then only one, two, three, four fingers. Okay, so five toes, four fingers. Obviously, we have five and five for each. Okay, uh, this round structure right here is called the tympanum. That is his eardrum. That's where he hears. Uh, he doesn't have an external flap of cartilage, which we would call our ear. He just has this, this area right here that receives sound and signal. That's where he hears. hears and, hearing is not quite as important as, obviously, these large eyes is seeing. Um, he has these nostrils right here, which go to the inside of the mouth. Okay, And they go down into the mouth so he can breathe. He can have his head just, just above water and, and breathe air. Okay, frogs uh, at this stage, they do not have gills. Now when they're tadpole stage, then obviously they have to be able to breathe underwater and have gills. At this point, he just has lungs. Okay, and we'll see those lungs a little bit later on. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, start to open up the frog and make some observations on the inside. Now the first thing that I want to do is actually open up the mouth and look at the mouth. So I'm going to uh, put my scissors right inside the mouth here and I'm going to cut through his jaw bone. Okay, I, it's hard to open up the mouth. This guy's been dead for a while. His muscles have contracted. They're staying there. It's going to be hard to peel it open without actually doing this. So we cut through that, that bone and that will allow us to open up the mouth. I can take the mouth. I can now pull the mouth open. And one of the things you're going to see is this large part right here which is the tongue. You'll also notice that his tongue is attached at the front of his mouth versus the back. Our tongue is attached to the back of our mouth. His is attached at the front. That allows his tongue to flip out and be much, much longer to grab onto insects and other food. Other things we can make observations about. Here are the nostrils that go to the outside. You, those are obviously connected at the front of the mouth. Our nostrils go back into our throat and connect in the back of the throat. And then he has, you just, you're, see, you're not going to see any large teeth, but if you run your probe along this edge right here, you'll feel this uh, vibration, you'll feel this little rough area. Those are his teeth right there, very fine teeth. He doesn't need teeth to chew, he just needs teeth to grab. So 
He uses his tongue to get a hold of it, pull it into his mouth, the insect into his mouth, and uses these teeth to hang on to that insect until he swallows the insect. Not chewing the insect, usually uh, swallowing the insect whole. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the frog and open the frog up. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to take my scissors and I want to make a little snip right here. And I'm going to pull upwards. I want to get just the skin at this point, so I'm not going to go down into, I'm going to go perpendicular with the, the, the abdomen, abdomen of the frog and cut through the frog's skin. And you'll notice that it's pretty easy to cut through his skin. We're going to make cuts across here. And here, right at the chest. And then also we're going to make cuts going down through the leg so we can expose that leg muscle. And cut going down this leg, exposing this leg. And I don't want to pull off the skin. I want to keep the skin intact and on the frog. You may also choose to make a cut going down his side here that will allow the frog to expose his side. And then you may have to kind of tear a little bit. That's okay. Don't tear off the skin. Just tear it back. You can also use the the scissors to kind of to re release that connective tissue to, to be able to pull it back and expose the muscle wall. You can also pull the skin back here to expose the muscle of the frog in his legs. And again, he's got these big, powerful uh, leg muscles that he uses to jump. And that's his primary source of movement is his legs. Okay, and we can expose that muscle in the leg. We can actually now insert the scissors, cut through that muscle in order to get in there, take our probe and be able to actually look in there and see the muscle bundles and the muscle fibers within that muscle in his leg. Now again, I'm, I'm keeping everything intact. I don't want you guys pulling off parts, not just yet. Keep everything, everything, the skin, muscle intact, and take a look at that. Okay, other observations real quick. I can look at his abdomen. You're gonna, you, a lot of you guys will make the comment, boy, look at that frog, he's got a six pack. Yes, he does. Uh, Frogs, when they jump, they used to have to have to use their hind legs, which are very powerful, and also uh, their abdomen, their stomach muscles. They have to essentially do a sit-up or a crunch every time they make a jump. Therefore, he has a very powerful uh, stomach, okay, midsection. Okay, at this point, we're ready to go ahead and open up the frog. And I know I'm going pretty quick here, so you can pause and rewind if you need to and watch this again. Uh, but I want to try to make this video as short as possible. So we're going to do the same cuts that we did for the skin. But again, I don't want to damage the organs, so what I want to do is I want to get the scissors, the point of the scissors in there, right there, down here at the base of the stomach, and then I'm going to pull my scissors upwards, and I'm going to cut parallel to the abdomen. I don't want to cut down, I don't want to cut down into the frog, I want to cut parallel. So you're going to cut, and you'll see that the cut, it cuts pretty easy, okay? You're going to get to this point right here, and you're going to cut through essentially the, the chest bone, okay? And that might be a little bit more difficult. Cut all the way up to the, the chin. And then we'll make our lateral cuts just like we did with the um, skin. And that will help expose the organs. Okay. So, once I do that, I can expose the organs. Okay. So let's walk through the organs that we see and we'll take these out one at a time fairly quickly. On top, I have the heart. Here's the heart of the frog right here. Okay, very similar to location that we find our heart, right in the chest, right in the center. This right here is the liver. Okay, these three lobes is the liver. Down here is the stomach. The stomach goes into the small intestines and large intestines. Uh, off to the side, you're going to see this, and it'll tend to make a mess, but we have this black powdery substance right here. Okay, those are actually eggs, so this is a female. Okay, so let's go ahead and take some of these out so we can get a better look at them. The liver is obviously on top and covers up most of the, of the organs, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the liver. Again, making very careful cuts when I do this because I don't want to damage the other organs, and then I want to keep this as intact as possible. Okay. So here is the liver, and I actually took out the heart with it, so I'm going to set the heart aside for just a second so I can get a close look at the liver. All right, so here's the liver. The liver is for uh, processing uh, uh, different uh, uh, substances within the, within the frog's body, okay, and detoxifying substances. 
Uh, three lobes to the liver, one, two, and three. Okay, very important organ. Put that to the side, and we're going to put that on my little organizational chart. I said that I removed the heart. Here is the heart. Obviously, the heart is responsible for pumping the blood. We'll take the heart, and we'll put the heart aside onto our chart. Okay, now that's going to start to expose some other organs. You're going to see the stomach. Let's go ahead and take out the stomach. I'm going to cut the stomach up here at the top. And then I'm going to cut the stomach down here at the bottom. And go ahead and pull out the stomach. And again, the stomach's going to be held in by some connective tissue. So we want to gently and carefully remove the stomach. Okay, so here is the stomach. Okay, and you'll have the opportunity to open up the stomach and examine the contents here in a minute. Uh, other organs we have, this squiggly substance right here. This is the intestines. So let's go ahead and remove the intestines. Got that squiggly, that is the intestines responsible for absorbing nutrients. Put that onto our chart. You got all this powdery substance right here. Those are eggs, okay? So we can remove those. They have a tendency to make a mess. I'm just going to leave them in here for right now, but that powdery, uh, pepper-looking substance is eggs. Back here in the back of the frog, we have these two sacs that I can pull out here. These two sacs, they're not inflated right now, but those are the lungs. And you'll see that they're these stretchy sacs towards the back of the frog. And just like us, the frog has two lungs. So I'll pull those two lungs out. So there is one lung and then the second lung. Okay, so two lungs. We'll put those onto our chart. And then again, that leaves me with a lot of this peppery looking substance. I can pull it out. Uh, that is eggs. So again, we have a female here. So I would put that onto my chart. All right, so that's going to wrap up the major uh, organs that we're looking at. We got some others in here. We got some fat bodies, okay, and uh, uh, some more intestine within there. But that's going to wrap up the major organs. And then now we would sit and look at these organs on our chart and be able to make connections between the organs that I have on my chart and then obviously the organs that we have in the human body. Okay. And you'd be able to open up these, expose these organs, and then uh, also um, look at their contents and then make observations about those. If you need to pause this or rewind, please go back and do that so that you can have a clear understanding of what you're doing in the lab. And uh, obviously, uh, enjoy the lab and ask questions.